Oh, Keith, he just got his lunch in in Japan. After each race, he followed back home. Waiting for him on the tarmac was his car of the moment. After all the years of struggling, I was finally earning the big game. The final time to leave the kangaroo full to put behind, step into a real sports saloon. The BMW 333i. Quieter and more refined than previous BMWs, it was the first to master the trick of combining achievable prestige with enjoyable driving. I was starting to take young ladies to ever thanks to the restaurant, and the Beamer was a much more fitting mode of transport than my own Ford. I'd raced in the BMW County Championship and was thrilled when I could afford a road-going version. Having raced one, or to own one. Oh, not just to the to the image, but also to the of this little car. I can still well remember that rasping bark as the red goes through 3,000 RPM every time it accelerates. A memory of the, as I put it, lively handling, because uh, this little beam had a bit of a reputation of having a sudden breakaway at the rear end. But for me, that was half the fun. But as the driveways of middle managers started filling up with the three series, I moved on to what was undoubtedly my favourite car of the 80s. This was a Porsche Turbo, but it wasn't a 911. It's the car I missed most, the 944 Turbo. It's good to see one again. Was by now racing to Porsche. His mission was to make the 944 look like a serious competition machine, which he did by winning almost half the races he entered. What a guy! Ah, oh, the memories come flooding back. In the first of days, the steering wheel was always too low on your, on your knees almost. And also, the two vertical, but still your thumbs were perfectly placed on the top in a temporary position. He holds you beautifully, and you can't really allow a real racing driver's position. The big bonus was the vast amount of luggage space, especially you pulled the top of the rear seat down. Most of all over Europe, I could take luggage for two, the racing kit, and for the Le Mans week, the golf clubs as well. <laughs> European trips, I could really use the performance of the 944, blasting down the autobahn to Nürburgring. I could use the mid-range grunt to destroy the entire mentality to move out of my way. Buttoning echoed fields and sound centers like this. The quick acceleration of the car would leave the straight wind staring in disbelief of this severe forces. The best one I probably had was uh, trying to cross the house with Rachel and Dijon and we took a long way home. And the handling of the car's performance of it was just fantastic. I had a smile on my face, but my uh, girlfriend of the day and wife would be a bit of a mess about it. It's a mess. But in due course, you put it too much. Today, a nice 944 turbo can cost you just under 10 grand and can easily live with far more modern machinery. It'll sit at 150 miles an hour all day long and get to 16 under 6 seconds. And you know what? I really want one again. 